Good morning. Hey, we're going over to Jeremiah 24, and our first reading is from verses 1 to 7 today. Figs. Good figs and bad figs. What about the good figs? Let's see. The Lord showed me, and there were two baskets of figs set before the temple of the Lord, after Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the craftsmen and smiths from Jerusalem and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very bad figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the bad, very bad, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge those who were carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good, into the land of the Chaldeans. For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. So now this is kind of interesting. The good figs, the good ones, they'll be led away to captivity in Babylon for a time. But God will bring them, or at least their descendants, back. They've been sent out of the land for their own good. And we've seen this. This is God overturning the entirely corrupt institutions, the priesthood, the princes, the the uh, the prophets, mostly false prophets, the various institutions of the society. It's all gone corrupt. And it's so far gone away from God that he's just going to overturn the whole thing by letting Babylon come in and disrupt everything. And then he's going to bring them back 70 years later. So the very institutions that God had there to build up the nation spiritually have all gone corrupted. And God's just He's not going to let that stand. He's turning it over. And he upends the whole nation to separate the good figs from the bad figs. The descendants of those willing to turn from corruption would, in turn, have that that good spirit, that spirit of willingness to go God's way and do it God's way. Those are going to come back, come back into the land. God's going to bring them back. The descendants of those willing to turn from the corruption are going to raise children who have that same spirit, very largely that same spirit. And those who want to be faithful to God, that group is going to come back into the land. And their positive spiritual influence would extend into the next generation and help God's people. God would give this generation a heart to know him, and the covenant relation would be restored. Remember that covenant relation? God says, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. That's that covenant relation. So the spiritual failure of the larger group doomed the whole nation to this. But the spiritual fealty of the minority group means we're going to come back. God is preserving his people at this time, here with the kingdom of Judah. If you or I ever become discouraged because it seems that the church in our time has become utterly uh, utterly lost its way, we should ourselves strive to remain faithful in spite of the departure of the larger group from truth. God sees you. God knows you're there. God will bless you and, and be with you, and he has plans still. He's working in his vineyard still, and he wants you to work in his vineyard still. Let's you and I strive to remain faithful in spite of the spiritual despair we could indulge in. Let's just go straight ahead and be faithful to the Lord. Let's be faithful in the congregations where we are the best we can, and God will bless. Even if the church seems adrift sometimes, God is still on his throne. He's not done yet. And let's you and I do what we can to transmit these solid spiritual principles of this last day message to our children and God will take care of the rest. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. Help us to be right. Help us to raise a godly family. Help us as husbands and wives to combine together. Help us in families. Help our children to be in the right place in in spite of all these influences coming. Lord, give us courage to be godly parents who will restrict where it should be restricted and be, be wise with our parenting in these difficult times. Lord, help us to simply be true and wait on you, and we know that you'll have your way. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's let God work with the good figs and change their hearts. Let's make sure we're the good figs, because that's what God desires. That's what we desire. So, all right, let's go out there today and be fruitful. God be with you.